escape valve for the Tarahumara. They can get liquored up, beat the tar out of each other, do anything they want to, and then they just blame on the booze and start the day again the next day. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, with how much you left on the uh, or shredded from the first book, and then how much you've learned since the time you wrote it, is there a uh, more to run the sequel out there or floating around in your head? Uh, I'm working on another book, but it's not a, it's not a, it's not a sequel. Um, I got some really good advice because you know I finished the book and a bunch of other stuff happened. It's like I'm adding on chapters, and my editor's like, you know, it's not like days of our lives. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to keep following the soap opera. Uh, Drop her story, move on, and um, that's what I'm doing with Born to Run. The thing that I've learned since then, it's been kind of cool, and, um, running technique and where that's going has really started to gather steam, and a lot of stuff that's, that's coming out now wasn't available a couple years ago. I mean, in the Lieberman study, comparing uh, barefoot versus shod runners, no one ever studied that before. That, that study just came out in January. So that part, to me, is interesting. Um, and I'm glad I didn't know this stuff. If I'd known this stuff three years ago when I was working the book, it probably would have been a much worse book because I would have been much more of like a flaming radical than I am now. Um, back then, I was still trying to understand this stuff and was trying to present the information a little bit more objectively as opposed to now where uh, I feel like I know it all. Uh, and I'm much, much less reasonable. Yes? Oh, when I make a statement, uh, I, I personally think and believe that you've done a wonderful job with the book. Uh, the storytelling was great, thank you very much. And with all the information that you had at hand and you didn't know how to shove it into one book, well you did a great job of mentioning all of it and getting us thinking and giving us references. I have never in my entire life read a book where the story is great, the storytelling is great, but there's so many references to so many things on five continents. So you gave each of us and all of us uh, different venues to pursue depending on our mindset, you know, maturity, interest, and all that good stuff. So I want to thank you Dude, very keep much. Keep going, I'm going to and hug you in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm barely holding on right now. <laughs> I, I, I want to tell you a very short, very quick yeah. story. I made an embarrassing statement on Facebook in October saying, I had a bad run, because I'm not a good runner, and I said, you know, the human body is not designed to run. I just made this silly statement. And someone somewhere said, really? Obviously, you haven't read Born to Run. <laughs> I picked it up a couple of days later, got hooked on it. Two weeks later, I finished it. I read it twice. And one week later, I ran 26 miles unprepared on a mindset and on inspiration. So it was all up here. You know, except for a week afterwards, you know. <laughs> So I'm here to listen. <laughs> so I'm I'm here to listen to you, but I'm here to genuinely thank you for the book. It was very inspiring. Thank you. and you put it out that you have no idea if anyone's going to mm -hmm. like it or if it's stupid or what it's going to do. But I, I felt like um, this was like my best crack because I couldn't believe the information was falling into my lap. You know, it was just such great stuff. Again, you got some chick vomiting in your bathtub at 3 o'clock. It's not fun at the time, but you come on, yeah, it's a pretty good story, so this will probably work. <laughs> Uh, where where I started running, where I planned on. Um, I always started running as a sort of last gasp thing, you know, because you sort of age out of all the other activities, you know, <laughs> basketball, everything else, you start getting hurt. And running just seemed like, well, it's just the way you stop from becoming a totally fat dude, just, you know, go sweat out a couple miles. And it was totally frustrating when I found I couldn't even do that. Uh, what's happening now, where I plan to stop, again, what's so cool about this is that when you learn a gentle landing, he's like, I don't know, man, I'll have to get smacked by a car. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you got a Leadville, and this is a crazy thing too. Um, one, one, a couple cool stats about Leadville, but one of them is uh, less than 50% of all the men who enter Leadville will finish every year. Mm -hmm. More than 90% of all the women who enter Leadville will finish every year. Yeah. 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 Ken Clover says, but I want to face it, it's always going to be a woman. <laughs> These gals get the job done. And now why is that? I think it's because you know, they, they go into it with the idea of like, they're not going to try to testosterone their way to the finish line, you know? But they're out there to be smooth, efficient, and, and finish the run. And if you can take that mentality, you're running. I think, 
Now, the other thing about uh, Leadville, too, is they have an age category of 70 plus. Wow. I mean, 70, 70 year old farts are running 100 miles, <laughs> starting at 10,005 and going to 125 through swamps and rivers. It's insane. I got timed out at 50 miles. I couldn't do it. Um, I think that just shows you, you can just do this forever. I, I like the part of the book where you talked about that uh, the guys deserve to be 27 and uh, at 17, uh, so they peak at 27, they don't get to the first, uh, speed they're running at 17 until they're 16. Actually, that's a better answer to your question. I should have shut up. I should have just heard of that. Bernadette's talking about a study from the University of Utah that uh, they basically track runners. They found that you don't, you don't, you top out at age 27, but you go back to running the same pace you're running age 19 when you're 64 years old. So you can basically keep the motor revving for 45 years. And John Kelly, the great Boston Marathon runner, they looked at his times from the age of like whatever it was, like 27 into his 60s, and it never changed. He ran the exact same time for 30 years. That one little stat, I ran my first half marathon this past Saturday, and it was because of that. If you feel like you're 64, I'm only 52. I keep doing this, but it was like that was the statistic. Yes. That was the statistic. <laughs> <laughs> that was the statistic. That made I can do this. You know, I can do this. Did they stand around afterwards? <laughs> Uh, how would you have marathon go? Well, I won my age group, which was, I thought that was really great, and then I found out I was the only one over. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, Unnecessary details. Thanks, <laughs> 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 Unnecessary details. I won my age group. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 that you know you've got this thing that you got this medicine out there that always works. I guess what I mean is... I mean, I mean just thought a little bit more, too. And then the next thing was, you know, Caballo gave me this advice. Day one, it took me a long time to figure it out. He kept saying, look, man, the secret is this. Easy, light, smooth, and fast. Like, focus on easy first. If that's all you get, that ain't so bad. And I think about that all the time. Like, focus on easy. Just, just chill out. Take it easy. It's when you're trying to force it that things fall apart. Mm -hmm. And I think, it, particularly in runs, and Barefoot Ken Bob, the great barefoot runner, says, when in doubt, relax. And it's true. Whenever something starts to go wrong in a run, and then, oh, that's relaxing. You just, like, flush it all out, and it's just, things come together. So, I guess my answer to your question would be that, is, you know, when in doubt, relax. Focus on that easiness, and then things start to fall into place. It definitely applies to running to everything else. I think we're on that note. I, you, it's, we've been here a little over an hour, and um, you know, both probably need Phil get him closed up. But uh, what we'll do now, if people do want to get the book or have their book, they can come up here, and we'll have Chris sign. We do do. Um, if anyone brought shoes for recycle, put them over in the corner back there, and I'll I'll take.